Good evening, family. How y'all doing? This is your brother, Brian Mary Deez. Peace to you. Peace to your home. Peace to your family. Peace to your community. Peace to your ancestry. Peace to my community. Peace to my ancestry. And peace to the nation that you, I, and they are building. Peace also to the God of forces, the great spirit above, mother earth below. This is M.T. Marathi, everybody. M.T. Marathi, saw lightning. So, we all know what happened with Amber Geiger, and this isn't... A video per se about that I've done something on that um, and I stand by that video um, I've talked to you a lot over the last couple of years about uh, prophecy and um, <clears throat> pardon me fam and I want to say something to you um, a couple of things that the ancestors really um, want stressed presently. First and foremost, prophetically, we have to understand that we are being shown things. We are having things done to us um, to show to us that we should be more independent, that we should be coming together as a people to build our communities, to build our families, to reconstruct our culture, and do it from the standpoint of us first, as elders on this planet. We must get ourselves together. Plus, we are being shown things to remind us of who are, or who is, and uh, who is not our friends. We're also... <clears throat> pardon me, being put in a position where we are being motivated towards making uh, an exodus. Friend uh, who, uh, or a person who watches these videos left a great comment about Exodus on one of my other videos and he's right we are being shown that you know we we should start prepping an Exodus from this death culture because that's what this culture is it is a death culture and you can measure the death culture by its fruits look at the the music that is being produced today and realize that there is no soul in it they have taken all of the life out of the music and is feeding us drool and dribble um mumble rap is a means of stimulating and blocking the internal senses cutting us off from our intuitive gifts we need to be removing our minds from this death culture because it now has its eyes set on the planet and pretty much destroying what we help to create. This is to say nothing about what is to come of the new world, but we are being prepared. I've spoken about uh, the potential of us having a commonwealth. We are being prepared to see the necessity of this. There was um, a tweet that uh, made headlines, at least um, on the internet, uh, when it became apparent that Pelosi was going to open up uh, uh, impeachment investigation and impeachment investigation on Trump. There was a tweet that was released by one of his um, supporters who, who ended it with hashtag Civil War 2. Family, <clears throat> it is time that you understand these people, many of them have been preparing for the Civil War for a long time. They have been preparing for what they call a great race war even if we aren't being prepared for it. They have our minds stuck in this notion of reconciliation without truth. 
They don't want to face truth. They just want us to do as they tell us to and to go about doing things the way they want us to. Um, whether or not it benefits us or not. We might need to reconsider that. <laughs> and that's being nice. But um, about Amber Geiger specifically, because I want to... I do want to talk about something with that. Um, I finally got the okay to talk about this, and I'll, I'll have to go into this further on another um, video. It's obviously going around the world, basically, that image of, well, the images of Bachman Jones' brother forgiving her on the stand and then wanting to go down and hug her and then hugging her and then the um, bailiff hugging her or not hugging her but stroking her hair and, you know, telling her everything was going to be okay and then the black judge coming down and hugging her and giving her a Bible and things. And I've heard a lot of people talk about this. But I want to tell you something that... Um, I connected, you know, a long time ago, about four or five years back, and the ancestors <clears throat> helped me to see this. Um, so uh, I have talked about the different strands of Europeans, the different genetic strands of Europeans. Um, I've talked about how some of them... Um, were created. I've talked about how some of them came from Africa, South America, what have you, um, and were placed there. Well, this information is going to be about uh, the people who came from Africa um, and South America and were placed there. It's going to start with the Hopi. The Hopi's mythology says this. In the beginning, the Great Spirit gathered all the peoples of the world on an island that no longer exists. It is now under the waves of the ocean and said, I'm going to create four groups of people. The black were going to have the guardianship of the water. That's the chief element. The red was going to have guardianship of the earth. The yellow was going to have guardianship of the wind. And the white was going to have guardianship of the fire. Um, the white were sent into Europe. Obviously, we know black, mostly Africa. And, but the, um, the story has been pretty much proven by scientists. Um, it seems that humans literally evolved this way. We went from black to red, to yellow, to white. Now, <clears throat> when the ancestors tell me, because we were all the same color at the in the beginning, we were all black. Um, not the discount the upper regions where we're like you know people talk about purple people and you know stuff like that you go into the, the upper regions you see that but down here black red yellow white that's it um so uh we were all the same color and we all had to choose where our souls were going to be anchored to now when I say choose, I don't mean like literally we got to pick where our soul was going to be at for eternity. Um, our frequency, I've spoken about this, aligned us with a certain genetic profile. Our frequency did. So we would go and we would be attached to whatever lineage our frequency would allow us um 
white is considered the lowest frequency on this um on this realm it's a heavier frequency it's really rooted into this world so souls who um uh would go would would be attached to that lineage um were thought to be um still maturing or uh they were looking for redemption or they were trying to get their their wings they were trying to advance so that they could um climb the hierarchical ladder basically of energy composition so <clears throat> um and the outset when this white race was created raise um there was going to need to be just like with every other group there was going to be elders well and there was also going to be a group of people who assisted the elders so uh a group of black people basically elected to go through a process to strip their physical forms of melanin in order to trap the genetics of Africa into the um uh, into the uh, uh, the physical form but to turn the physical form white and this was thought to be beneficial because um, of the ones that were being created and not all of the ones who were created were horrible and not all the ones who were created um, were meant to be um, uh, kind of a thorn in the side of the project there were some that were just made to be ordinary um, but this was this was supposed to help infuse other lineages within these within these pretty much blank canvases that were being created now um, the people who chose to do this were celebrated they were massively celebrated because it was uh, known that what they would have to go through to strip their body of the melanin was going to be highly, highly difficult. And the potential for devastation was high, but the potential for great reward was higher. So, um, along with albinos basically this group of people went into Europe now the goal was for them to stay <clears throat> experience about you know 10,000 years worth of winters and lose their melanin and then to come down uh, the ice age that occurred wasn't necessarily foreseen um but it was thought to be you know okay we can work with this um in most tr in most uh indigenous groups especially africa south south america some in central america they always talked about the coming of the white brother and that it was to be a time of great immense celebration the reason they talked like this was because deep in their memories and sometimes even in their mythologies they remembered that before time they sent these great people into Europe to lose their melanin to become white to be able to teach this new group a new way of living and then to bring them out into the world to help 
raised the world into what was supposed to be a golden age. They were expecting a group of advanced elders to come back. They didn't get that, obviously. What happened, and 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 the story is not very, it's not complete for me yet. But what I do know and what I can say is that um, when the uh, when the ice age hit, there was a lot of confusion, especially among the elders. Um, not all the elders, but there was some elders who were very confused. Um, and there was there was some infighting because some elders wanted to leave completely and abandon the project and just, you know, get out. Um, some elders did try that. Some of them lost their lives and cost a whole lot of other people li uh, uh, their lives too. And then um, other elders said, look, you know, we knew this was going to be difficult. We understood that it was going to be difficult. Let's just stay here. And we have the instructions. We know what we're supposed to do. Keep going. This lasted for about two generations. And um, the infighting didn't cease. It actually increased. Because, you know, when you have one generation that there's like a little bit of infighting and you're not able to resolve that, then it doesn't typically go away with the next generation. It hardens. And it typically spreads a little bit. And then the generation after that, then it spreads a little bit more. So you started having a little bit of fractured groups. Moreover, roughly about that time, about two generations in, you started having communication problems. Because the Earth, with the Ice Age, shifted slightly. And the portals which they were using to communicate shamanically with the upper deities were becoming closed and they were becoming concerned because they couldn't really get a hold of any of the deities anymore. Now, there were some elders who pointed out that if they looked deep into the, the, the um, mythologies and things that they were given, this was actually somewhat predicted <clears throat> and that what they were supposed to do was to carry on as if the deities were still there, for there would come a time when they'd be able to communicate again, but they were just supposed to basically maintain the status quo. Well, some of the priests, some of the elders, didn't like that, and that caused more ripples. This again continued for a couple of generations until you had some serious fragmentation happening. And you started getting little individual groups breaking off and doing their own thing. During a couple of um, thawing periods where there was still, you know, massive ice everywhere, so they couldn't, like, escape to Africa or anything, um, you had various uh, groups literally going to other caves to live so they wouldn't have to be by these other people. Uh, and it was during this time period that the genetics really got screwed up. Because um, some of those rogue beings started introducing their um, uh, their rogue projects into this scenario, causing even more devastation. That said, everything got screwed up from that point on, um, especially as you had. Um, some of the elders beginning to really lose their melanin. And uh, there, one of the groups was not really excited about their elders losing their melanin uh, because they looked at it as a status of godliness. They looked at it as a status of um, um, high quality, basically. And the fact that their elders were losing their melanin um, didn't sit right with even the elders. Now, these elders had, had agreed to this, but they're now starting to get into the habit of thinking, this is like two generations in, by the way, still, 
<clears throat> there's there's a lot of conversations going on between the elders and even amongst the ordinary people on whether or not the gods had abandoned them. And there's a feeling among some elders that the gods had abandoned them. And so they were like, we're not giving up our melanin because this is our only connection to the gods. I don't care what we said to the gods. The gods have abandoned us. So I'm keeping my melanin and we're going to do whatever we can to maintain that. Now, uh, this is where about two generations after this, so we're about four or five generations and maybe six. Um, as their melanin starting to decrease, that somebody gets the brilliant idea. Well, to be fair, they were also going through a little bit of a famine, famine because they hadn't. This group particularly hadn't planted very well. There is an early frost, um, and they had not planted very well. Uh, they had not heeded the warning of some of their non-elders who had suggested that they start planting in some of the caves. To make up for what they couldn't do outside all kinds of messed up stuff but um they were experiencing some famine um they had went out and and thank god they were able to catch some big game or something but they came across um by accident uh neanderthals and it wasn't really for another couple years that they figured out that these Neanderthals, they had seen Neanderthals before. They were down further into what is modern-day Persia, South uh, Saudi Arabia, things like that. So he knew what Neanderthals were. Um, but Neanderthals huh, had melanin. Low mountains, but they had melanin. Somebody gets the brilliant idea of, well, I'm losing my melanin. I'm starting to look pretty white, and I need melanin. What are you going to do? Male, female? The way that the ancestors tell, tell it to me, it was a female who broke the taboo. And uh, she wanted a melanated baby, supposedly, uh, and went forward um, and uh, I think... If I know, if, if I'm interpreting it correctly, that um, some men actually helped her corral another man, and uh, you know, they had a baby, and that was how the Neanderthal became introduced into the stream, and they mate it this way to try to keep that melanin in. Now, I was shocked when I first heard about that, but you know, it's what it is. Now, um, fast forward. What does this have to do with Amber Geiger? So, when the Ice Age finally breaks, and they finally are able to go down into Africa, all of that old information is pretty much lost. They don't even remember why. Well, excuse me. I'm, I'm not being completely truthfully, truthful here. A lot of them don't remember why they were even in the caves. They believed God had abandoned them. They were on punishment from Africa and South America and other places who didn't like them because they were white and didn't want anything to do with them because they were white. Um, they, they held great animosity towards not only God, but everything that they perceived as God. And they perceived both nature as God because... You know, they had kind of messed nature up before they were sent to Europe. Um, but they perceived uh, nature as God, and they perceived this color as God, as godliness. And since they didn't have it, they were dirty. They had a problem. Now, that also came from some stuff that was said in Africa and South America, you know, when they were born, because you had albinos born, and it's like, whoa, wait a minute, this is, this is strange. So... They took all of that angst, many of them. There was a, it was actually not as big as you might think of a group. Um, and then they directed it on the outside world. You did have strands that still remembered the old. 
and were trying to remind these people of the old. But what they what these strands didn't realize is that the European genetic strands had been tainted with synthetic genetics, you know, from the rogue uh, doctors, and also with Neanderthal genetics. Now, I can hear it already. Some of you, one of you is going to come back and say, there is no evidence to suggest that there is a non-Neanderthal European. Yeah, there's a reason for that. First and foremost, they haven't checked every European. But secondly, there is a reason for that. Um, Europe has had a horrifically violent history. And the people who were not Neanderthal-ish typically became the victims of the Neanderthals because the Neanderthals had, had a primary goal. And that goal was to kill anything that stood in its way of survival. And if it perceived you as a threat, it killed you. It killed you. To say nothing about the, uh, the uh, synthetic genetics, which we are seeing really come into existence now. That's why so many of these white women are flocking to black and brown guys, because the only way that they're surviving to the next evolutionary cycle is they got to get their synthetic genetics hooked on to something melanated and hope that it survives. And hope that it survives. So, um, the Moors came in and reminded them of their um, responsibility to the world. <clears throat> the Moors did not understand until I think it was probably too late just how corrupted the entire European strands have gotten. Nonetheless, they still told them about the um, American experiment. They told them um, about their, uh, their being welcomed by indigenous people throughout the world, that they had really um, uh, gotten um, redemption. And if they didn't have redemption, they gave them ways in which they could actually um, uh, find it. In fact, some of your pilgrims practice an off form or did practice an off form of Christianity, which the, uh, European scholars are funny. They don't, they like the Moors is the one thing that they just don't want to admit gave much to you, gave much to Europe. And that off brand of Christianity, which the pilgrims were practicing before they got here, that was heavily influenced by the Moors. But that's for another thing. That's for another thing. So, um, when these when these white people did go to these indigenous camps, they found these indigenous camps very hospitable because they had been expecting them to come back. They were like, "Yo, I'm so glad you made it through. Um, let's celebrate." Many Europeans wrote about how these folks pretty much treated them like a godsend, while they were planning in their psychopathic Neanderthal minds how to kill and rape the possessions of these people, they were being celebrated like gods because these indigenous people still had the mind from the original plan. They still remembered that, whereas these Europeans did not. They didn't. And so um, this also explains why black people and brown people and red people have always treated Europeans in this strange way where no matter what Europeans do, we're like, we forgive you. No matter how horrible they are, we're like, we forgive you. We understand. Where we want to protect them. Why? Why? Because deep down inside, and I know most of you ain't going to want to hear this, but we, we, we knew it was going to be hard. That's how we, this is how we rationalize it. We feel guilty. We say to ourselves, man, we knew it was going to be tough. 
We knew it was going to be tough. But seriously? It made you forget your whole life? It made you forget your soul? It made you forget you? It made you forget us? It made you forget the Most High? Oh man, that's a hell of a hell to be living in. So yeah, we forgive you, no matter what you do. We forgive you. We forgive you. And when you look at Amber Geiger, when you look at what happened in that courtroom after she was convicted of that 10 years, that is literal. And I'm, I know this is going to be hard, but this is why they allow me to tell you the story now. And there's so much more to it that I'm still parsing out. What you saw was a, and I know some of you are going to be like, huh, what you saw was like a mammy and an, and, a, and, and an uncle Tom. And no, what you saw was a elder comforting somebody who was so traumatized in their minds now, who was so traumatized that they dehumaned somebody else. I spoke before about um, the pride, the, the negative pridefulness that keeps us from uniting. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our belief in the original plan that keeps us from considering that the majority of the European stock is so poisoned that it will never, no matter how much forgiveness, no matter how much care we give to it, it ain't never coming back. It ain't never coming back. It's so hard for us because we look at these people and we say they come directly from us. Because in our heart of hearts, now see, that's, that's a metaphysical concept. In our hearts of hearts, we have four chambers in our in our hearts, but there's also a portal. There's actually several portals in our heart. In that portal is another heart, basically. That's our compass. That's our way home, among other things. But in there, in our heart of hearts, we are we feel guilty. We know that at the beginning of, of a before time, when we were on that island, we were all the same color. And we are looking at our white brothers and sisters and saying, you've forgotten that much just because of some ice? Oh, we feel terrible. And we baby them like we feel terrible. We baby them like we feel terrible. Francis Cress Welsing, and I, I'm, you know, the more I think about that woman, there are a couple of years back when I first started really getting into her, I looked at her and I said, you know, that's a walking goddess. She is a walking goddess. And the more I think about what she told us, man, the more I realize she really was a goddess. She was a living, breathing goddess goddess. She said that we have to have respect enough for ourselves to not forgive people who aren't sorry for what they do. And I'll tell you, the way that it appears to me is that oh, there was a movie that I watched years ago. Oh, and I can't remember, I don't even know the title of it. It was a, a Jamie Foxx movie where um, he was a prosecutor and there's this one man who um, I believe his house was broken into and his family was killed. And he was like CIA or something. And he spent like the next 10 years figuring out a plan on how to kill every person who... Um, who actually, you know, invaded his house and, you know, killed his family. Because Jamie Foxx had, um, 
I don't think he did a plea deal. I know the guys, one of them ended up going to prison. But anyway, um, oh God, what was that movie? And long story short, the guy ends up going through and killing not only the people who did all this stuff to his family, but he starts killing people um, from the prosecutor's office who are around Jamie Foxx. Um, Jamie Foxx knows it's him, um, offers him a plea deal or something. And, but at the end of the movie, after he's like killed all these people, uh, Jamie Foxx goes, you know something? No more mercy for you, man. No more mercy. You know, I'm not pleading with you anymore. No more mercy. You taught me that. And the guy goes, he smiles and he goes, huh? Well, I guess I'm a good teacher after all. And then he gets killed actually. But I really think sometimes that that's what this is about for us, that we ourselves were so cocky. I mean, think about it. We came out the gate and we hold, we held the key to the planet. You know, black folks, and you know, black folks, you know how cocky we can get. We might've been feeling ourselves a little bit too much. And we were given this opportunity to show our strength and look at what we've done so far. I wonder sometimes if that's what's actually happening. Is we are being played for fools because we refuse to see that a fool ain't what we think it is. We refuse to see that a fool is about potential. But the ignorance of that potential. If you look at Amber Geiger, maybe it's just me, but you can tell that this woman has genetics that is not just based on an African phenotype. She has genetics uh, that is integrated with something else. And that's important to remember. We have to wake up because I think the Most High is challenging us right now to find that respect so we can prepare for the future. And I don't, I don't think we're ready, family. I don't think we're ready. Let me know what you think. I mean it. I want to know what you think about, uh, uh, about this information because um, I've been bundling it together for the last couple of years. And like I said, there's a lot more to it that I'm still parsing out, but that is the beginning of it. Um, when I when I first got the book, uh, The Iceman's Inheritance, uh, I was amazed that it really confirmed portions of what I'm talking about, what I just got done talking about. All right, so uh, that's going to be it for now. Uh, leave any comments that you have below. And as always, I look forward to hearing from you. Peace and love to your family. Peace and love to you.